overseas or already over there, whatever. The husband got married, and I was at the wedding. So I'm, uh, I'm also aware of the fact that there are many uh, pastors and apostles like Brother Samuel and that are here today that just, we just don't have the liberty to have all of you up here every night. But we try to do what the scriptures say to, uh, to uh, honor those that, that come in, uh, the God's servants and leaders. And um, with that said, uh, tonight I want to, to share with you uh, uh, a unique subject, uh, something a little peculiar. We're going to talk about voodoo and the uh, religion of ancestral worship. And how many of you know that if you're going to get involved in spiritual warfare, that God's going to paratroop you behind enemy lines? And you're going to have to trust him. Um, that was a, a, true, a true thing that took place, I think, with the 181st Airborne uh, many years ago during the war. And they had trained the paratroopers to go behind enemy lines. And they had them successfully done that. And then the little corporal mentioned to the sergeant when they saw all the enemy around him, they saw it. We surrounded him. Sarge looked at him and said, son, we're supposed to be. We paratroopers. <laughs> so you need to know what kind of war you're in. Now, we're in a real war. And uh, uh, in, the, in the voodoo religion, uh, and I'm only going to be able to just, 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 just touch just a little bit of that. Uh, there's much material that we have here, uh, teachings that have been done. Uh, the foremost authority I know on, on DVD and CD teachings on magic would be Dr. William Noe. Uh, who was with the camp here 20 plus years, one of our mentors. Um, in the voodoo ancestral worship are uh, deities that uh, make up their worship team uh, called Orisha. And so they are the mass behind the rituals and behind those rituals and behind them are, in many cases, the Catholic saints. All right? And so uh, initially voodoo came to the Western uh, Hemisphere over 200 years ago <coughs> when the first African slaves were sold in the West Indies. And from there, it was introduced into the United States, uh, resulting in heavy concentrations of voodoo. Of course, uh, voodoo worshipers, primarily in the South, especially in New Orleans, but uh, I don't think anybody's questioning anymore that they're all over the world now. Um, our children, uh, as a pastor, I have a great liberty to be able to monitor and develop the children as my own children grow. I have grandchildren, 11 of them now, and uh, I think it was night before last, the children, they just bust up the house. Uh, Dad and mama, two grandchildren. I said, oh, come on in. <laughs> and uh, all the children in our home, in our, in our city, all have keys to our home. And I, that's where I was raised up. I had keys to my parents' home, so even as a grown man. But anyway, um, so our children, we teach all this. I mean, we, it's not voodoo every week. I mean, we've got faith, tabernacles, you know, <laughs> redemption, salvation. I mean, but you got to know this, too, because if you don't teach them, somebody in the school going to teach them. And they're going to just seduce them on in with that love potion. So voodoo, known as the, uh, or is known as a religion of Haiti. I, I make a different little bit with that, but it is a religion of Haiti. It's practiced also in Cuba, uh, Trinidad, Brazil, uh, of course, Africa, uh, the southern United States, uh, and throughout the whole world. And it also combines uh, an element of, 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 of the of Catholic uh, uh, faith, uh, the tribal religion of West Africa. Uh, primarily, I'm going to probably uh, touch on from the Nigeria, Yoruba tribe part of, of voodoo, uh, but it's much more larger than that. Once again, we can only cover a little bit. and. Um, so some of you are probably a little comfortable right now but you realize you probably think it's a, an African thing, but I, I'm going to prove to you today that you have worshipped him. And in music and song, in your sitcoms and your television programs, uh, inadvertently not even though you did so. Now I'm not going to go real deep in that because we already got a teaching on that called Orisha. So you can just get that tape. It was done maybe eight years ago here. So I'm, I'm talking about voodoo, but I can't talk about voodoo if I don't tell you who the deities are that, that, you, that they worship in the rituals and how they have infiltrated into the church. And you say, into the church? Yes, I will prove it. <clears throat> so voodoo, uh, uh, what do the voodoo's uh, worshipers do? Uh, voodoo cults, they practice ancestral worship. That is very familiar in some faith. Some, some of the faiths out there are, uh, uh, pray uh, to the dead, and so voodoo religion primarily consists of uh, praying and worshiping uh, deceased or ancestors. 
and a complicated hierarchy of deities. The Egyptians did that, Pharaoh did that. Uh, God warned his people in Deuteronomy 18, chapter verse 9, out of scripture for this evening. And so God warned his people. He said, when you are coming to the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of these nations. Amen. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter pass through the fire. I mean, that's a great fire movement going on around here today. You need to be careful with this drunkenness in the spirit. And I think one of the best books I found on this is written by who just happened to show up today, Jerry McGee. Most ministers won't touch this because they're going to lose your members if you start talking about drunkenness in the spirit. <clears throat> or that use a divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, a consultant with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or necromancer. And this is found in Deuteronomy 18, chapter 9, verse or 9 through 11. And I think all of us are familiar with these passages of scripture. The enchanter, for instance, uh, means to hiss, to uh, whisper, uh, a spell, enchantment. And also in Jeremiah 27, 9, it means to practice magi, or magic, an observer of uh, times and sorcery. So there's a whole lot there in the, in the enchanter. Uh, much of this has synchronized into the uh, charismatic church today, too, uh, under the demise, uh, well, under the uh, uh, design of saying this is a, a new move of God, a, a new anointing, uh, a new manna. And God says, I got old manna, you hadn't even ate yet. <laughs> and so there's divination that God warns here, uh, act of obtaining uh, secret knowledge, uh, which is witchcraft, then the witch. A witch is one who practices magic to whisper a spell, charmer to fascinate, to cast a spell, to join by spell. Uh, a lot of um, uh, sexual relationships are, are spawned in the South because of, of love mating, love potions by a spirit called Haba Haba. Dr. Noah has written about it in his book uh, in the magic section in the rear, probably the last 100 pages deals with magic. No, I have never read anyone that went that far in detail that was a man of God. That's always somebody who practiced it and then they want to read, 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 write about it, but this man spent uh, several years, because most of the book I think he wrote about me anyway is called Rejection. Yeah. He used to grab me up here, hey, Brother Jim. He said, I stayed up all night, I don't know what to preach. And, uh, and this is true. I go back here to camp, I don't know, 15 plus whatever years. I'm, just, I'm in it to win it all the way. I live for this. There's no escape, no running away, no second plan, no second agenda, one plate, one cup. And so uh, then there, the Bible talks about a consulter with familiar spirits, and that's one who makes contact with uh, friendly uh, or family or familiar or familiar spirits. There's a lot of family in the familiar spirits. Incidentally, you notice that the word familiar spirit doesn't uh, appear in the New Testament because we all got one called the Holy Spirit. So you don't need none of these other familiar spirits. Well, the Bible talks about here in this chapter of wizards, uh, a male witch, a conjurer, a ghost, pronosticator. We've seen a lot of that now. We've got stuff going on TV right now, uh, women vying for one man and all kind of pro. I wouldn't watch that junk. It said no evil thing before your eyes. And, uh, and so it's just, just, I mean, it's just, uh, I don't need to go any further. We all know y'all. Everyone in here delivers. If you're not, you, you came because you know God has pulled you. He's fishing you into it. And so you want to learn more, so you're here for a reason, and that's good. And so, uh, so a, a male wish knows many things. Uh, a necromancer, a necromancer means to question, interrogate the dead, or uh, pray to the dead also in one aspect, search and seek to the dead, to worship the dead. It's got a lot of meanings in a necromancer. Uh, my background and family was uh, Catholic, uh, but they, I, they didn't really hurt me that much because I, I, the devil did a good job with me because after that I became a Methodist. <laughs> a couple of years after that I became a Baptist. <laughs> and then when I was in the military, I used to go visit uh, the Muslim places and get patted down. I thought it was cool. <laughs> I was important. And then one day God saved me. He had to save me out of Pentecostalism first. And I mean, everything, I was just grieved up and everything. I was going to hell. Yeah. And then God kept took me out of Pentecostalism and he just told me, now you can get born again. <laughs> so I'm born again. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, so I had a lot of things there. So I, I say that in the sense that uh, don't let your past cause you to become bitter, become better. 
Mm -hmm. I know a lot of ministers that come out of those type of backgrounds and, and they're delivered to the congregation is bitter. They need to know traditional teachings, but they don't want to get bitter about it. Judgment to keep you from walking into the grace and glory of God. So you got to get the judgments out. Or at least grow past that stage. I mean, there's other people who want to hear other things other than how you came out of something. <laughs> okay. The Egyptians, uh, they worship the dead. They celebrated the dead. I mean, look at the Pharaohs, you know. Uh, Catholics pray to the dead, purgatory, etc., etc., and some of, of our ancestors also did the same. Uh, God specifically instructed uh, Israel concerning these eight forbidden spiritual practices, and the practices of uh, the practitioners of voodoo practice all eight in some manner or another. Uh, the principal evil spirits of voodoo are called the Loa, and they may vary from cult to cult. Uh, the Loa are African tri tribal gods that are usually identified with Roman Catholic saints. While once human, now they have become divine. And the primary African elements of voodoo are found in uh, elements such as food offerings, uh, dancing. Uh, uh, to the uh, 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 they arrive at a, a frenzy state, um, and then the individual or the individual that's going to be mounted by the voodoo spirit. Uh, it's, it's brought into a trance. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's a possession trance. And, uh, um, but their terms, they call it being mounted by the deity. They, they choose to be mounted. They practice their life, preparing themselves for the ritual to be mounted on that particular ritual. Uh, doing this ritual uh, that takes place. The reason why I'll give you a little scenario, but I'm not going into great detail, is I'm going to give you this, the, what I've observed in the Christian church that parallels it. Okay, so I'm not just giving you a line of voodoo. You know, I'm not going to want you to read a, a certain thing I got in the book and you know, indoctrinate you into Satanism and say it's all in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you need to be careful what you got in your houses also. Uh, I can't really go into detail with that right now. Um, so anyway, while this, uh, these elements are being observed, dancing and uh, the food offerings and stuff like that, something, a very important element has to be present, and that is drumming by the men. There's a certain drumming that must take place. So uh, during the voodoo ritual, uh, each dancer behaves, behaves himself in a manner uh, characteristics of uh, possessing of a spirit and why they are in the ecstatic uh, trance, perform demonic cu cures, they give guidance and prophecy, our predictions. Um, uh, there's even a movement in our nation right now called it, it, Eskasy. Trans channeling, trans dancing. And there are many popular TV uh, people uh, that are going around doing big, big worship with drumming, and then they prophesy to you. And uh, I've witnessed similar behavior in a few Christian praise and worship services personally. Uh, the deities called up in the voodoo ritual are known as the Orisha, all right? And gods of nature, gods of weather, gods of harvest, gods of iron, gods of water, gods of war, uh, and they require worship. They require it. Uh, they want food, uh, <coughs> foods prepared for them, special foods. Uh, they want special instruments, uh, particularly the drums, a special drum called the abata or an elongated type drum. They have to have that. It is mandatory for their uh, for proper worship. Uh, and then the, the, uh, the person that's mounted must dance to a frenzied state of possession, much like being drunk in the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And voodoo is, is nothing more than African witchcraft brought to America during slavery. And this, of course, is uh, uh, something that everyone needs to be having broken off of them because I will uh, Indicate in this in this lecture and this t teaching tonight that um, that it has uh, crossed all religious lines, it's crossed all racial lines. <laughs> it's no respect to a person with the devil. You want to kill everybody. And uh, uh, I've been writing on the Orishas. I've just completed the book about a year ago, and we just didn't have the money to publish it yet. And uh, it's taken 20 years of research to uh, to get to this point. And so I'm gonna give you some, some things. Uh, when, I, when I speak to you, some of the stuff I'm reading is 10 or 12 years old because we just hadn't had the time to, there were other things God wants to do, and plus he was teaching me about these deities 
probably for work now or in the future. We don't need, some of us get into too much of a rush. Um, our pastor that I honored and uh, served, uh, uh, and, I, and, I, and I can say uh, willfully um, and appropriately, uh, who's gone on to be with the Lord, I think he was, was 90, 91, 92, um, uh, is, a, is a great testimony of sometimes we get in too much of a rush. And we think like our life will end tomorrow. And so I had the great privilege of serving under him up to his 90s. And, uh, and I have several other pastors of his 70s and 80s. And uh, so we need to take our time and just trust God one day at a time. Right. Only today is promise. Right. So now in the church, uh, in one particular Christian denomination, I was a member of for several months. There was a great emphasis on the support of drums during the testimony and worship services. Other musical instruments were used, of course, however, it was believed that these drums uh, that the, uh, the, the drum main rhythm heightened the response of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Holy Ghost power. <laughs> and supposedly we're supposed to sum up the power of God in their midst. As I look back during, uh, I'm saying several years now, 17 years now, um, in one particular service, I, re I clearly remember the drummer playing his drums along with the piano player. Like when we used to say, honkadore, hallelujah. <laughs> well, that's way back 27 years ago. But anyway, um, so, uh, and the singers uh, were all singing, and uh, there was pronounced rapid drum beats that were going on during this, during this particular service. And back, by this time, uh, something happened there, something that was a, a change in his rhythm. Uh, but incidentally, for a, a drummer, that's an original drummer from Voodoo, Santeria, Macumba, Palamante, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Uh, it takes about 14 years for them to master the drum beats. It don't happen overnight. You don't, it ain't no such thing as you just got it. You woke up yesterday, I got a gift. All right? You got to earn this, but the devil will make you pay. All right? So anyway, by this time, the singers, everybody stopped. They began to submit. Uh, to this new uh, change in the, yeah. in the drum beats, which they called, they thought it was the move of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And the drum began to strike, the snare drum, strike after strike, over and over again. Sometimes there were multiple fractions to heighten the response. And during this manifestation, several individuals were also dancing uh, with a distinct pattern, what I call a two-step shuffle. My wife said there's no such thing in the Bible as a Holy Ghost shuffle. I said, I know, but I've seen it. Because <laughs> she, you know, she let me know there's no such thing. So when you tell them, let them know there's no such thing as a two-step Holy Ghost shuffle. That somebody didn't come up with that. I said, yes, sir. I said, you're right, Alberta. <laughs> you're right, Bert. We <laughs> broadcast it live, you know. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, in this two-step uh, uh, shuffle, there's a dragging and a scraping of the feet, sometimes turning themselves around. Uh, and then when this particular percussionist uh, reached the desired level of his uh, rhythmic stipulation, he entered into a, a trance, and I remember his head went to the side. All right, his drumsticks remained in his hand on the, on the, on the uh, snare drum. Uh, the people continued to praise the Lord. They were shouting. He was, he was there. He couldn't move. He was, he was bound. He was completely bound. He was unable to move. I began to ob observe something very unusual with his head slightly tilted towards the snare drum, saliva fluids, uh, flowed downward to the floor, steady, and stayed there. It didn't break. There was no breakage. And they thought the Holy Ghost was purging him. He said, don't touch him. The Holy Ghost got him. Mm. And uh, now remember, this is over 17 or so years. Like, uh, some, many of these people have been delivered from them uh, since then. And so um, <sighs> the, um, this young man was bound, and there was no, no one to deliver. Uh, and I, I suspect that uh, the, these uh, uh, many individuals are in assemblies today uh, where there's uh, counterfeit spirits trying to uh, counterfeit the things of God. And anything that uh, uh, is introduced in the, the assembly that brings confusion uh, should be suspect because God is not the author of confusion. And as I look back at the worship uh, service, it left me confused not knowing how to receive this newly um, um, introduced manifestation of what we thought was the Holy Ghost. It just didn't lie with that. I was too young to judge anyone, I, 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 I hate judgment, first of all, and I have to deal with a lot of things today as a leader, and so I'm real cautious about that, but, but growing up, I just hated judgment, so 
Um, that really wasn't my issue when I was a young man in the ministry. It's more of an issue today because I see and know much, so I have to be careful with what I have. And um, so at the end, it just, you know, I just like, what is this? You know, I wouldn't think about leaving the church because I saw that. You know, my heart wasn't like that, you know. I just wanted to love God and learn more, you know. So <clears throat> over the years, I've witnessed what is generally referred to, and I've written this in, in my booklet. It's called The Holy Ghost Shuffle. And, but I want you to know I've never personally attended a voodoo ritual. I've never personally uh, attended a ritual ritual or any other type of satanic ritual. But I have received video footage footage from a, and I did have a, a live, uh, two years of live lectures from in a college, at a university, and the teacher was a uh, doctor of anthropology and did a uh, television show and uh, was sent in from Berkeley, which is known for music, and University of Texas. And when I began to share her deliverance, that cut off our relationship. <laughs> yeah, because she was really into the original. Oh, man, you know, so. And so after the second year, we, we didn't have much else to talk about. I wanted to continue the conversation, but that was cut off. But, I, so I do have video footage of actual, uh, the garments and the, the dance, and I'm telling you, you would not see much of a difference if we would have staked up there, Christ Holy Fire Church up there, you wouldn't know the difference. <coughs> you know what that, the Holy Ghost day, you wouldn't know the difference. Just by the words they say, maybe. Instead of them calling on Jesus, they say a chain go. Okay. <clears throat> During the Orisha's entry or possession of a selected worshiper in dance, the possessed individual is then placed under the control of a, of a mounted Orisha, whoever is being summoned, and the Orisha spirits begin speaking to the group. And you might think this is a little strange. How can this happen in a Christian group? I'm telling you, prophesying, uh, these Orishas will manifest, they'll prophesy good, uh, sometimes uh, good, not much, but evil depending on which degree of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, worship, uh, the food preparations, the heightened state of the drumming, uh, the music and the worship, if they were pleased with that, they were satisfied with that, then they may prophesy good. It's going to be, in Africa, they'd be prophesied good harvest, uh, no flooding. In America, they say you'll get money and a hug. <laughs> the individual dances becomes overtaken what is to believe be, uh, believed to be the Holy Ghost, uh, usually entered into a trance, sometimes prophesying to uh, to hearers. And doing both of these type of meetings that I've been part of and many more, uh, the worship begins to dance, use uh, uh, out of control uh, prior to the riches of robbery, they just dance out of control, just go out of control. And should our dancing unto God be the same dance that is used by the practitioners of voodoo, uh, Santeria, uh, any other uh, witchcraft or satanic rituals? Absolutely not. We are to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. The scriptures never teach the believer to worship God in the flesh, right. entertaining ourselves or entertaining others. Certainly the Lord does not take full control of our minds, uh, to such an extent. These are the work of evil spirits. Now, the Orisha worshipers in voodoo I've observed through video uh, invoke the Orisha no differently than what I've observed in, in several Christian churches. Uh, believers were instructed to or encouraged to dance. Everybody get up and let's dance. The Holy Ghost is in. Holy Ghost power. And so they are in, instructed to dance to a, a, a two-step shuffling matter. Uh, a manner to an aggressive, fast-paced music melody and uh, with distinct drum beating. And uh, many of the churches are now getting real popular so they can afford uh, elongated drums, congas and bongas. I played all that. I played uh, nightclubs in Japan and America. So I'm well acquainted with what, you know, that music is a very powerful tool. Uh, it's a very same thing that Satan said, I draw attention to myself. And he was designed to do it for God. He said, but it's so strong, this thing is so good, I'm gonna have them worshiping me. And music can do that. And um, so um, the drum beat uh, uh, change in the mood of an individual. And drum beat does do that. And I, I don't have time to go into that because this message is not specifically about the actual deities used in the voodoo ritual, which is the ritual, what they are, and how they need the drum beats. But drum beats are very important. We notice that drum beats were used uh, practically most of all these wars, just go back and study American history, Britain history, 
you see the drummers and everything. I just uh, it, it fires you up. It's ready. You ready to fight? Mm -hmm. uh, all you gotta do is pull up downtown somewhere and just stay there about ten minutes. Somebody gonna pass by. All you, you all you gonna hear is that's right. That's right. So you say, well, they, they listen to the lyrics too. Uh, yep, yeah, that's that's error too. But I'm telling you, this is the thing that calls them to go in and rob that liquor store. Amen. 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 Some of us listen to some stuff. We think it's God. You're in there listening to the Jesus Christ. Then over here you got you got uh, brother somebody else on TV talking about and God wants you to give unto the kingdom. So if you give, you shall receive. And over here you're on the radio, you got something else going on. All right. Then you got your Bible open and you just scatter. Amen. You scatter. He said, well, I can't study unless I got music on. Uh, David said, I encourage myself in the Lord. So you need to be able to study without having music. I'm not saying you know, soft music and worship music is not good, but if you have to have that to get there, then don't go to prison. You ain't gonna last. You say, well, I ain't going to prison. I said, well, I'll, I'll go wherever you say go. I live for this thing. You gotta give up. You, can, you can't establish where you want your own righteousness in this thing. So 